What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? It's your boy, MM2K, back again with another one, all right? Do me a huge favor. Before we get too deep into this one, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Walk those bells for notifications, please, so you know when your boy's dropping these doses. I appreciate all of y'all straight up because you know the deal. I am not too proud to ask. Okay, let's get into it. All right, the game you see on your screen, Outer Worlds, The Outer Worlds. We're going to review it, go over it, all right, and talk a little bit about it. All right, so with that being said, for those of you that are familiar or may not be familiar with my content, what I do here is I'm not one of those content creators I got to jump on the scene first and just uh, just shove something in your face just for the sake of doing it for clicks. I do reviews to inform people. Whether I get a thousand or a hundred thousand clicks or not, I want there to be informative information out there. So I also get that people don't want to wait, especially when it comes to an RPG, weeks and weeks and weeks or maybe even months for you to complete your game to even get any sense of uh, what, what, what you know what you feel about it. So what I do is these journal reviews. As I'm playing the game, um, every little chunk of experience that i have with the game i make a journal entry of it and then i go and make a vid video of it and share my thoughts with you the gaming public so with that said let's get into it about the outer worlds all right so again those of you that don't know i chop my video assessments into four parts first part is visual implementation how are the graphics physics and the overall atmospherics of the game you know what i'm saying match up with the gameplay um, product placement, how was this game advertised to the gaming public and how does that match up to what you actually got in your hands? Also, game depth, that's the meat and potatoes of the game as far as I'm concerned. Level design, game length, replay factor, broad appeal, and lastly, game mechanics. How are the controls? The movements, stiff, too loose, or just right. Basic instructions and bugs, so let's get into it. All right, so in my most recent gameplay of the outer worlds I, I i ended at like level seven i played about five hours right i have a total of like almost 10 hours in the game so in my last session here's my thoughts um as far as the visual implementation is concerned i give it eight visuals look good in this type of game it's not a triple a game and top notch quality as far as visuals are concerned to me and I don't think this is like really a triple A game all like that anyway to 2019 standards, but nonetheless, the game looks great in, 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 in many regards. All right. Um, now product placement, you know, that's where the game was presented and marketed to the gaming public. How did what you actually got in your hands match to that? Now, as far as product placement, I give that a seven. Okay. And my grading scale for those of you that are not familiar with it is very very tough you know what i'm saying i put things to task here and a seven for me is not cutting it all right that's actually what i label anything uh a seven just ain't cutting it and here's why i say that the game was marketed as a spiritual successor to fallout new vegas and i know you guys have heard a lot of uh pundits and, and content creators say that and that's not accurate at all and i feel that they're saying that solely for one or two reasons reason one is that they're still they still feel some type of way about fallout 76 and primarily they're not being dialogue trees on it in it so the simple fact that this was marketed as the competitor to fallout in, in lieu of fallout 76 and all this controversy and this is embedded with a lot of dialogue trees they want to automatically just you know make it a binary choice this is this is the real fallout they're either doing it because of that or secondly just to simply put it, their gamer IQ is not that high. And look, I get it. It was a success for Obsidian, um, you know, to as a ploy to compare it to Fallout in, in lieu of the Fallout 76 controversy. But this game is more of a Mass Effect meets Borderlands with a mostly Bioshock aesthetic. And the only thing relatively close to Fallout is this semi looking of an, an open world which really isn't that open as far as you you being able to journey and your character specking and how you interact with your npcs that's it or how the npcs look really not how you interact with them but that's it but the bulk of the game is mass effect meets borderlands with a bioshock aesthetic primarily all right so 
again, that may have worked for them commercially, but me as the gamer, not so much. Um, as far as game depth, I gave the game depth a seven and a half. And here's why a seven and a half for me is basically it's problematic, but not too bad. Now, here's why I say that. All right, now follow me here. Here's the positives. The atmospherics of the game look very polished outside of a couple of typos that I thought were hilarious, <laughs> but I digress. The dialogue trees are very deep and the options they branch off to are very distinct as far as other dialogue options. I want to be very clear about that. I'm not talking about the aspect of the overall game. The dialogue trees within the game are very deep and they're very, you know, for sure about if you choose this, we're cutting you off from being able to, to, to choose this. You know what I'm saying? As far as dialogue is concerned, primarily. Pay close attention to that. Now, here are the negatives. This smash and different style of game series, though connected together in an interesting way, never go too far in one aspect to give this game an identity. You know what I'm saying? Like, the Fallout aspects. You know what I mean? The, the specking of your character, the way you interact with your NPCs and how they look in the semi open world journey. You know what I'm saying? Even though they're polished, they don't lead to a lot of journey. Journey. That's why I say it's semi journey, semi open world. The Borderlands style of gameplay that I talked about earlier, even though it's fast paced and smooth, it's not robust and accounted enough. You literally get into a firefight for about four seconds and then go into like another two hours of dialogue trees. Seriously. And those dialogue trees, which are reminiscent of Mass Effect, the Mass Effect dialogue loop seems to never end at times with the end result not being that satisfying beyond you knowing that you created a particular outcome. Now, what does MM2K mean by that? All right. See, at least in Mass Effect, when in one, when you had to make that fateful decision of which one of your crew members were going to Paris, right? Remember that? I'm not going to spoil that. Or, okay, and that, that was immediate and instant, and it had an impact to how you played the rest of the game because it cut off a character forever. So therefore, that, that, that controlled everything. I don't have such scenario right now. I mean, the guy that I just talked to, as you've seen on the screen, he's going to join me, but that's not immediate. For my 10-hour game, I did that like an hour or two. For the other eight hours of the game, he's nowhere to be found. He's on the ship somewhere waiting for me to go to another world. So I don't get any immediate gratifications from the choices that I make in the dialogue trees. Then, for the ones that I do get some immediate gratification, that gratification is, 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 is little. Like, I'll go through hours and hours of talk, go talk to Gretchen and, and go see Bobby D on the corner of the boulevard and go here and there and then come back and get a mod at the end of the day for a mod that I got several hours ago. In Mass Effect, when you went through diverse dialogue trees and picked out particular outcomes, the end, the end means was fantastic. Example, getting access to the Krogan world in three. Yeah, you may have had to do a lot of running and through various games in order to do that, but that gave you access to a whole planet that you would have not had access to had you not done some particular type of things, mainly in the dialogue, right? And having access to that world, that was one of the most prolific things in the whole dialogue series was that getting access to that Krogan world. You know what I'm saying? I don't get any of that in this game. There is nothing prolific. I want to say nothing prolific in the outcomes of the dialogue trees that you go through. You just, you're just happy knowing that I talked to Fred, now Fred likes, likes Winifred. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I talked to Joseph and Joseph gave Bobby back his money. That's the mere satisfaction of it all. Nothing more, nothing less. And to me, in a game that's mixing all these different styles that I, that I can compare you to, when you fall that short of implementing those styles, it's a problem. All right, next, let's get into game mechanics. All right, the game mechanics are fantastic, Kyra, with all that said. 8.8, .8, I give it. There are no glitches, very smooth gameplay, very good explanation about what you're supposed to do. I did run into an instance though, to where 
in one of my dialogue trees that told me to go somewhere, but before I go somewhere and pull a lever, I'm to give this person a letter for the simple fact of me just going there though, trying to satisfy a side mission, that letter giving to that person got cut off. It didn't make any sense. It was reminiscent of Fallout New Vegas and why I'm not too favorable to that. Um, some of the loopy dialogue crap end results that happened there, but nonetheless ended up working out for me, so I'm not gonna ding them there. So I'm gonna be fair. For those of you that said, oh, MM2K, with the game depth reasoning you gave, you're just hating on a game that is not true. I'm, 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 I'm gonna leave that one alone, but I just wanted to mention that, okay? Um, with that being said, overall in this five hour gameplay, I gave it a 7.8. Um, and my overall feels for the game right now is a 7.9, okay? And for me, a 7.9 is, it's okay. It's not problematic, not not too bad, but it's not like pretty damn good or anything. It's, it's okay, all right? And, and, and my overall feeling for the game is this. Now, the game is very polished. It's aesthetically pleasing, and it's a decent buffet platter of elements from your favorite games. That said, it doesn't go far enough in any particular element to truly be satisfying. And if you like dialogue trees, fine. You get a lot of them. But the end results are lukewarm. And though a decent game and one easy to pick up and play for an RPG, everything so far is simply that, lukewarm. And with that said, that's it from your boy. Hey, yo, let me know what you think about what I had to say in the comment section below. I, I hope you guys all enjoyed this. And if, you, if you're playing the game too, leave what your thoughts are in the comment section below for, for all of us to, to discuss, you know what I'm saying, in, in, in the comments. And with that said, I'm going to be doing more of this on the Hard Knock Digital Culture, which is, you can catch me streaming live there at hndc.live or at twitch.tv forward slash mighty most 2000. And with that said, you guys all have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day. Until next time, peace.